dear moderator, vice moderators, members, advisors, and colleagues, your eminences, your graces, dear sisters and brothers in Christ. The world has changed in ways we could not imagine when the Central Committee last met in Geneva in 2018. By God's grace, we are together again for the first time online meeting of the Central Committee. I am grateful to each one of you for making this meeting a priority. I want to thank our former General Secretary, Bishop Olaf Ixedvei, for his spiritual encouragement today and for his leadership in a time of unprecedented change. Together with our moderator, he led the WCC response at the beginning of the pandemic encouraging the churches to do everything possible to protect life. Bishop Ulav, your legacy continues to guide us and we are grateful. I want to thank the leadership of the Central Committee and the members of the Executive Committee for their tremendous commitment. We faced many challenges this past year and your leadership provided stability and direction. I want also to express my deep gratitude to the WCC staff who pioneered new ways of engaging our member churches and ecumenical partners. When I was asked to take responsibility as acting general secretary, it was thought to be for a short time. It has already been more than one year and my mandate was extended to the end of next year to ensure and coordinate the preparations for the next assembly. Together with you, I remain committed to leading the council as we continue the pilgrimage of justice and peace to the 11th assembly next year in Karlsruhe, Germany. My report will be short. Since May last year, we have published and shared with you monthly accountability reports. This has kept us closer in a time of physical distance. The reports show how we adapted and how relevant our work for unity and reconciliation is. In this report, I want to focus on how we have adapted and how the theme of the assembly inspires us because in the midst of the pandemic, we have seen how Christ's love moves the world to reconciliation and unity. WCC in a time of pandemic. As our moderator eloquently described, the COVID-19 pandemic took the world by surprise. It continues to cause tremendous suffering and exacerbate existing and emerging inequalities. The entire world continues to be affected. Our unity as one human family and as a fellowship of churches is more important than ever. We are living through a time of great suffering. Our churches have lost many members and leaders, but as people of faith, we continue in hope since our Lord Jesus Christ has risen, conquering death and giving life and renewed meaning and sense to the world. The member churches have been incredibly resilient and responsive, responsive during the pandemic. You are each a part of this transforming discipleship that has kept the church vibrant and alive. The pandemic continues to affect the entire fellowship. For the WCC Secretariat, the pandemic has meant supporting member churches in addressing the pandemic, postponing the assembly by one year and adapting our ways of work. What has inspired us is the love of God in Christ for all creation. And the primary purpose of the WCC 
as a fellowship of churches calling one another to visible unity in one faith and in one Eucharistic fellowship expressed in worship and common life in Christ. Quoted from WCC Constitution, Article 3. The WCC strategic plan continues to guide our work in a time of change. The pilgrimage of justice and peace is a strong strategic direction that holds the fellowship together. We have learned many things in the past two years. Some of the important lessons are reported in the uh, proposed addendum to the strategic plan Gen Pro 03. I want to highlight some of the things I think are important for us to keep in mind as we work together this week. The limits imposed by the pandemic push the WCC to accomplish many things in different ways. The most significant adaptation was the enhanced use of online work. Even as we long to meet together in person, we see a future in which hybrid methodologies provide new opportunities of working together. The pandemic provided an opportunity for more communication with member churches and partners. There has been an increase in regional cooperation, particularly with regional ecumenical organizations. This help, helps keep the churches at the center of our common efforts. The pilgrimage of justice and peace, regional consultations on COVID-19 are one example of a new era in caring for the fellowship together. As many churches adapted to online prayer and worship, the WCC also adapted by provi providing opportunities for global prayer, regional prayer, and daily prayer. This has been among the most inspiring developments, to be more deeply connected to prayer, to pray for one another and to pray together for our churches and our world. The pandemic made many existing inequalities more visible, particularly the scene of racism. Before the pandemic, we were planning to relaunch WCC work on overcoming racism after, after the assembly. The pandemic showed that we could not wait because in Christ, every life matters. It should be a priority for each of us to engage the churches in overcoming racism, racial discrimination, and xenophobia. A new position and program for overcoming racism was established since January this year. Much of our work continued with good results, but our peace building work, especially in the Holy Land, faced many challenges. Activities like the ecumenical accompaniment program in Palestine and Israel were significantly impacted. I am very proud of how we responded by listening to the needs and expectations of the local churches and by working with the local heads of churches and our partners in peace building to reshape, consolidate, and strengthen WCC Jerusalem-based activities. In Geneva, the Green Village construction site opened in March 2020 at the Ecumenical Center, also operating under COVID conditions. While the real estate market has uh, experienced pressure, good progress have been made towards our objectives for, for the property development project. Though the pandemic brought financial challenges, the generosity of the member churches and ecumenical partners has helped us continue our work and prepare our fellowship towards the assembly. WCC preparing for an assembly. We are full of hope that next year we'll meet in Karlsruhe, and that is what we are planning for, including different scenarios for health and sanitary requirements. 
I want to assure you that the executive committee together with host churches is monitoring the situation closely, relying on facts and advice from health experts. I am grateful to the assembly planning committee under the leadership of his eminence, Metropolitan Professor Dr. Gennadios of Sassima for their commitment. I'm also grateful for the work of the Assembly Worship Planning Committee under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Elizabeth krause Wilman. The report of the Assembly Planning Committee, Gen Pro 02, presents a vision for an assembly deeply rooted in the theme, Christ's love moves the world to reconciliation and unity. It proposes an agenda that will engage the delegates in prayer, reflection, conversation, and action. Much work has been done, and we are on the right path to a great assembly. The team has taken on new meaning through the experience of the pandemic. Our Trinitarian theology, which over decades has been developed articulated and agreed upon within the WC documents, helps us to see the love of Christ in the context of the love of the triune God for the whole world that was fully manifested in the incarnation in Jesus Christ. When one speaks about the love of Christ, one speaks about the chaotic and indiscriminate love of God in Christ for the whole of creation. This is the very essence of our faith. Taking this direction, we have also reaffirmed the direction of the common understanding and vision, CUV of the WCC, which stated that reconciliation and unity are God's final purpose in Christ for humankind and creation, according to Colossians 1.19, and is exemplified with Christ's compassion for the suffering in Matthew 9, 35 to 39, and in many other passages of the four gospels. This perspective opened solid theological ways for dialogue and cooperation with the world. The assembly theme reflection published online in January develops this interpretation in the context of what confronts the churches and the world today, including COVID-19 and its consequences, the climate emergency, racism, racism and growing social and economic inequalities, the undermining of democracy through authoritarian politics of fear and hate, and the ambiguous consequences of digital revolution. Christ's love opens the horizon of hope. As a fellowship of churches, we remain faithful to our founding purpose to promote Christian unity so that so the world may believe. At the same time, it is equally important to restate that God's purpose in Christ is to move the whole world and the entire cosmos to reconciliation and unity. As the WCC Fellowship prepares to gather in Karlsruhe, Germany, for the 11th Assembly, the experience of the churches in responding to a global pandemic will continue to shape our understanding of how Christ's love moves the world to reconciliation and unity. WCC Central Committee Agenda. As the moderator affirmed, the agenda for our first online meeting is limited. We hope to achieve three important objectives. Strengthen our fellowship through sharing and praying together. Receive applications for membership in the WCC. Recognize new ecumenical partners and address other issues of memberships. And three, move together towards the 11th assembly in Karlsruhe, Germany. We are also asking you to extend the strategic plan, financial strategy and communication strategy to include 2022. The strategies have served us well. They continue to guide us through the pandemic and help us to prepare for the assembly. 
at the request of the executive committee included with my report is a list of pending business that the central committee has not yet addressed. I want to reassure you that nothing has been lost. The list reminds us there is more work to do before we reach Karlsruhe. God willing, we will meet in person in early 2022 to complete our work. Now conclusion. The global health situation continues to bring many challenges. Yet, in faith and hope, we continue our pilgrimage and affirm that God is the Lord of history, ruler of the universe, and that God's revealed intent is to bring life, unity, and reconciliation to the whole world. We, as stewards, caretakers, and co-workers in God's mission, continue to move, pray, and work so that God's will be done. We remember Christ's steadfast promise to the disciple. I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. Thank you.